Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're going to take an Excel file and load all of the data from it into a PyQt5 application and more specifically a Q table widget. So the Q table widget is basically this type of table that you see right here on my screen. So this is within a PyQt5 application and we're going to take all of this data from an Excel file. So this one that I'm showing you right now and we're going to load this data in the PyQt5 table. So this is the goal of the tutorial. The tutorial is definitely beginner friendly, so you may follow along if you are a beginner. The only thing I ask of you is that you have PyQt5 installed. I do have a separate video, very short, that you can refer to if you want to see the instructions on how to install PyQt5. And without further ado, let's get started. So I'm going to pull up VS Code. I'm actually going to close the application. So I have VS Code open with a blank Python file. So inside my folder called pyqt5 excel 2 qtable widget, I have two main files, the main.py, which is the Python file where we're going to write our code, as well as the Excel file containing all our data. Now, do note that I'm using VS Code because it's my preference. However, you can use any text editor that you like or that you're comfortable with, so long as that you can run Python and you're able to actually be comfortable working with it. All right, so this is my blank file. Let me actually sh first show you the Excel file. So just a disclaimer, this isn't my file. I didn't write this or create this, I downloaded it. So the source link for the main file will be in the description. Now, I think I did remove one of the columns when I downloaded the file, so it may not be exactly the same thing. However, this file will be inside the GitHub repository linked in the description, which will contain the source code as well as the main Excel file. All right. So we're using this file. We obviously want to load this Excel data into our program. How do we do that? We're going to use a popular Python module called OpenPy Excel. So to install it, you need to pull up a CMD or a terminal. So here I'm using the integrated terminal in VS Code. And simply you're going to type pip install OpenPy Excel. Now this is going to take about a minute for you to install. In my case, I already have it. So it says requirement already satisfied. So in your case, just wait a minute, it should be there. All right, now that we've installed OpenPy Excel, we can go ahead and start using it to load this data into PyQt5. So first things first, when we write our code, we want to actually import everything that we need. What we want to import is the following. So from PyQt5.qt widgets, so if you have PyQt5 installed, you should be able to import this Qt widgets. You want to import Q application, Q widget, Q VBox layout, Q table widget, and Q table widget item. To make things easier, you can go ahead and replace all of this with an asterisk. This way you would import the entire Qt widgets module, but for the sake of specificity, I chose to type each of them out. And you'll see where we're going to use each single one as I show you throughout the code. Okay, next thing you want to do is you want to import sys. Again, I'll show you why we need it in just a second. Finally, you want to import OpenPy Excel. So OpenPy Excel is super important. This is how we're going to actually access all of the data in the Excel file and how we're going to load it. All right, so let's get started by actually creating the most basic PyQt5 application. So let's write down the starter code for a basic PyQt5 app. Then we'll see how we can add a Qtable widget and load the Excel content. Okay. So you want to define a class. The class in this case will inherit from Q widget. So this is where we're using this Q widget import. So this will create the window that we're going to launch when we launch the application. Then you want to fill in the constructor for this class. So the init function, you want to call the init function of the super class. So using this line of code, we're actually calling the init function of the super class. In this case, this is the Q widget. All right. Next, what we want to do is we want to set the window title of our application. So here, this will be the title of the window. I'll show you when we run it. The title will be load Excel data to Q table widget. So this is the title of our application. Now that we've done this, what we want to do next is actually execute the application. To do so, we need this block of code right here. Inside if name equal main, so this is where we're actually executing the Python code. What we want to do is define a Q application inside a variable called app. Every Python app needs a Q application to actually be able to be executed. So this is how we can actually execute the application and see what we developed. We pass sys.argv. This is actually saying that we're passing the command line arguments to this Q application. In our case, we don't really have any, but we keep it here regardless. 
Next, what we do is we create a window variable which has an instance of the main class. So this main class, we create an instance of it. And what we want to do next is to say window.show maximized. Show maximized will ensure the application launches and it's almost full screen. So it's totally maximized to the size of your screen. Finally, we execute the application using app.exec. So let's run it and see what we have so far. And as you can see, it launches a big application. It's definitely maximized and it's totally empty. So it's totally blank. The title, as you can see, we set the window title to be load Excel data to QTable widget. And you can see it right here. So now we've created the most basic PyQt5 application. What we want to do next is to actually add a QTable widget to our app. We can't do that before first adding a layout for our application. So for simplicity, I'm going to use a QVbox layout. This will essentially lay everything out in one vertical column. So everything will be under each other, stacked under each other. In our case, we only have one thing. This is the Qtable widget. So it doesn't really matter whether it's a vertical box or a horizontal box. So I say layout is QVbox layout. Then I set the self.set layout to be layout itself. So the layout that I previously defined. After doing so, here I can create my Qtable widget. To do so is very simple. Using one line of code, I say self.tablewidget.qtable widget. So here I'm creating an instance of this Qtable widget class and I'm saving it inside a variable called self.table widget. Finally, what I want to do is I say layout.add widget. And here is where I'm going to say self.table widget. So I'm adding my widget into this layout. Now, if I run it, I should be able to see, you see, this is the table widget. Obviously it's blank. There are no rows or columns. There's no data. There is nothing. It's just a blank table widget that we just added to our application. Okay, perfect. So we have the Qtable widget. What we want to do next is to actually load this Excel data to do. So I'm going to create a function called load data, and it's going to look like this. So, and then I'm going to go define it. Let's say load data. And of course we have to pass self. So this is where I'm going to load all of the Excel data into this Qtable widget. All right, how am I actually going to do this? I need to utilize OpenPy Excel. First things first, I need the path of my Excel file. So I'm going to come here to my Excel file. I'm going to right click and I'm going to copy the path. I'm going to create a string and copy paste the absolute path into my Python code. So now we have the path inside a variable. Next thing I want to do is to say workbook. So this is a variable and I'm going to say open pyxl.load workbook and then I have to pass the path. So here I'm saying go to this path and load me this workbook using open pyxl. I'm saving this in a variable. Now the way open pyxl works is that load workbook will actually open up this workbook that we have right here. However, you do know that in Excel, you might have multiple sheets. So in our case, we have one sheet. However, usually in Excel, there may be multiple sheets. So we need to refer to this sheet using, so sheet, it will be workbook.active. So active means the currently open sheet. So now list of countries is active because it's currently open inside the Excel file. All right, now that I have the sheet, I am able to actually load all of the different values. And to do so, I'm actually going to show you how I can load them. It's pretty simple. So let's say values is equal to list. So you'll see why I'm converting a list in just a second sheet dot values. Okay. So sheet itself refers to my active sheet in my Excel file. And then dot values will get me all of the different values inside of this sheet. I convert it to a list. And now this will produce a list of tuples containing my values. What I'm going to do next is just for the sake of showing you, I'll say for value in values, print value, and I'll show you what each value is. So let's run it and see what it prints out. You can see it still launches the blank application. We still haven't put everything inside the Qtable widget, but going back to the code, you can see these are the values. So you have the first tuple. So this is a Python tuple. These parentheses, they show you a Python tuple. You have rank, country, 
population and then the percent of the world population and then in each one you have the rank and the value of the country and the value of the population as well so as you can see this actually enabled us to retrieve all the values from the excel sheet and load them in python so this is where openpy excel did its job we opened up the workbook we accessed the sheet and then we accessed the value of this sheet what we did was simply just print these values however the main goal of this tutorial is to take these values and to put them in the q table widget so let's do that i'm going to close this and i'm going to actually shut this off and i'm going to rename this to be list underscore values just to signify that this is a list of all the values and the values themselves are python tuples as we just saw okay you notice that the very first one let me actually pull up the output again let me actually run it again so here as you can see this first value in the values list so the first tuple is just the header of the excel file so you have rank country population percent of world pop these are the header this is the main part of the excel file we want this to be set as the header in the q table widget so the way i'm going to do that is very simple i'll say self dot table widget dot set horizontal header labels so this will set the labels for the header and then i'm going to pass list values sub zero so here take the very first list the very first tuple inside this list give it to the header so let's rerun it and see how it looks like we still actually don't find anything in the table why is that this is because we haven't set a row or a column count for the table in pyqt5 you always have to set the row count and the column count before you start populating your q table widget so let's do that so we close this and come back to the code so let's go here and say self dot table widget dot set row count and what i'm going to do is say sheet dot max sorry max row so sheet dot max row will get me the maximum number of rows with actual values in my excel sheet and then self dot table widget again dot set column count and here we'll say sheet dot max column so this is the maximum number of columns in this case we have four columns so this max column value will actually be four so after doing this let's rerun and as you can see we now can see the header of this table and you can actually see the actual physical table right here so you can see all of the rows the four columns and you have rank country population and the percentage as the header so they're not actually one of the rows this is the header of the table so now we've added the main information, the header, as well as we've added the number of rows and number of columns. The very last thing we need to do is to actually add the data. All right, let's add the data. So to do so, I'm going to create a for loop and this will loop over my data inside this list.values variable. So let's say for value tuple. So here I'm indicating that this is a tuple. However, you can name it anything you want in list values okay so now let's just maybe print this out for now because i want to show you one main thing let's run it and go back here to see what we printed out you can see the very first one is this rank country population percent of world population so how do we get rid of this simply we will just slice the list so i will say list values and we'll go here so one and so on so we're saying take the list values list and start from position one and go until the end so here we're skipping out on the very first value in this list the reason is we don't want to put the header again a second time inside the table all right so this value tuple will return this row it will return a single row the values of a row let me show you again so let's run it and go to the print you can see it starts like this so zero world the values so these are the values for each separate row and notice that we no longer have the header being printed out here so this was our goal to get rid of the header so you can see the values are printed here now this value 
represents one value tuple. So each time I print a value tuple, I get this row right here. Before I show you how you can actually insert this value tuple into the Qtable widget, let me show you first how to actually insert any value in the Qtable widget. So I'm going to comment these out and go to a new line. All you need to do is run this line of code. You say self.tablewidget.setItem. Then you specify the number of the row as well as the number of the column. So if I say row zero, column one, or let's say column two, and then we say Q table widget item, you create a new Q table widget item. This represents a single item inside the Q table widget. So one cell, let's say hello. So I'm just doing this for example, just so that you can understand how we set a value to the Q table widget. Let's rerun it. Now you can see in row zero, which is the first row, because everything in Python starts at index zero, and then column two, which is the third column, we just added hello here. And now I can change these values any way that I want. So coming back here, I can say in row one, in column one, uh, let's say row seven. Let's rerun it. You can see it right here. So it changed the position. So now what we want to do is to actually create this loop and fill in all of the information in the respective cells. Okay, so let me just comment this one out now and go back to where we were writing our code. So we have value tuple. We want to loop over this value tuple and insert every single value into the Q table widget. So I'll say for value in value tuple. And now what I'll say is self.tablewidget.setItem, the way we said before. Now we're going to need something for the row and the column. Let's get back to it in just a second. But the Q table widget item itself will be the value that we said right here. So this will be one of the values inside the tuple. We convert it to a string just to stay safe in case there are integers that are too big to be represented as integers in Python. So we keep everything as a string. So what is going to be the index of the row and the index of the column. So these need to be set dynamically. We can't do this. We can't hard code it and say zero, one or seven the way we were doing so before. So let me clear this. We need to set it dynamically. So for the column, what I'm going to do is come here and I'll say column index equal zero. So the column index will be where, which column we're putting our assert this table item. So the column index, it starts at zero and it's going to be incremented every single time this loop occurs. So as we loop over the values, we're going to insert this item in a different column. Okay, so we have the column index. Now what we need is a row index. So let me clear this print statement and come here outside of this loop. We're going to have a row index. It's going to be equal to zero. And then every time we loop this outer loop, we're going to increment the row index by one. So let me show you now whether this works and I'll go back and explain it. So let's see. So now I ran it. And as you can see, all of the information that was present in the Excel sheet now appears inside my table. So the way this works is that this row index will loop from zero till the maximum amount of rows. And then each row, we loop over every single individual item inside this row. So every single individual column. And this is how we were able to get all of this information using OpenPy Excel and add it to our Q table widget, as you can see right here. So now we have all of our data in our PyQ5 application inside our Q widget. All right, so that's really it for this video. Again, the source code will be available in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.